Hey everybody, this is Born Nelson with Random Artac, and it's time for a Unity tutorial. How cool is that? Now, this tutorial is going to be a little bit different than most, so let me explain just really quickly if you have 20 seconds to bear with me. Um, so in my, in my channel, I like to do video game reviews every once in a while because I think game design is important. I want to try and look at that, not just how to make a game, but also how to design a game. Um, but these, these videos are the least well-received in my whole channel, and that's okay, right? It's a tutorial channel. But hoping to try and bridge that gap a little bit, I had a really good idea. And the idea is this. After I make a review video, I'm going to then try to find a mechanic in the game and reproduce that in Unity. So pretty cool idea, I think. But maybe not. Let me know what you think. So the game I just barely reviewed was Heroes of Hammerwatch. And here, I mean, I could do like a movement tutorial, but that would be too easy. A shoot tutorial, easy stuff like that. What I want to do is rather, if you look, these torches have a glow effect. The attacks have a glow effect but nothing else has that bloom. These coins are very bright, but they don't have a bloom effect. Um, only certain particles and elements have that bloom effect. So how can we do this in Unity? Now there's a couple of things that they might've done. They might've just put a kind of like a glow sprite on top of this, or they might've separated into different layers. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity. And while we're here, let's go ahead and just see if we can't get a glow effect that we like, first of all. So create post-processing profile. Let's call this Bloom. I'm extremely creative with the different names I use. And then I'm gonna turn this on, add it to the main camera. And let's just try and see if we can't get this to be the glow that we want, right? Um, let's crank that up a lot. Turn off soft key. Now this is something I found, soft knee, excuse me. That needs to be down way, way, way low. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if this looks about what we want. So you can see it's glowing. It's not glowing quite as much as we want. Right there is a pretty good glow. Now, the problem with this, like if I change this up to like 21, right? The problem with this is as I add game objects into this scene, they will also get the bloom, which we don't want. You, you saw right there, right? It's like blinding. So how we do this is we go ahead and go to these torches and just the particle effects, we're going to change the layer to maybe, I don't know, props. You can change it to whatever you want. That doesn't matter. The whole purpose of this is we're trying to differentiate what we want the bloom to be on and what we don't want the bloom to be on. So yes, I changed the children. Go to the other particle system, change the props. Yes, change that. Now, if that's bothering you, I'm sorry, I'll just uh, move that really fast. That's pretty bright. So now these, these two particles are on a different layer. If I go to this main camera and I go to, where is this at? Excuse me, calling mask. I'm going to turn off props. And now there's no more props on this layer. I want to put it on a different camera, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this camera. Now, when you duplicate a camera, you always want to turn off the audio listener. You can't have two audio listeners in a scene without it messing up a lot. We're going to call this one Bloom. And so that first camera, we don't want to have a Bloom effect on it at all. And now the second camera on the Colleen mask, Instead, I want to click nothing and then turn on props. So all it's seen is the props. Now I can change the depth. So it's a little bit higher. So I can change it up to zero. So it's going to layer, it's going to render the bloom first, then the main camera, because the main camera's depth is negative one. But you can see it's not mixing. So in the bloom, I can go ahead and change this to don't clear. And you can see it's starting to kind of layer these, but let's move this cube back and see if it's really working. Nope, it's not, right? And so how do you fix that? That is a question. Everyone would assume it's like, okay, this is the only layer. Oh, excuse me. This is the only layer with the post-processing effect. Shouldn't it only affect that layer, but it, it builds, it, it combines. And so we're going to talk about how to do this in our next tutorial. Go ahead and thumbs up and subscribe. And you, just seeing if you're paying attention, I'm going to do in this tutorial, sillies. So sorry. <laughs> Have you ever seen those? It's like the bait click though, where they're like, hey, come back to our next tutorial. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. So how are we going to do this? It's the strangest workaround ever. You create another post-processing effect. So go ahead and let's call this non-bloom. And I'm actually gonna have this have an ambient occlusion and an anti-aliasing and all those good things, but you actually put a bloom on it, as strange as that seems. So on the main camera, you put non-bloom here and you turn on the post-processing effect like that. And you can see already, it actually got rid of a lot of the bloom, right? Um, so again, non-bloom, change that soft knee way down, change this. You can change it to whatever you want, doesn't matter. But then in this bloom, change the threshold to one. I don't know why one, it just works. <laughs> it's a great tutorial. 
Um, <laughs> so in short, the bloom that you put on the bloom camera, it can you can play around with the intensity as much as you want. You can play around with the radius. You want the soft knee down, otherwise it starts picking up again. And you want the threshold one. That is the only things that you need to be restricted by. The non-bloom channel, you need this to be above one. So one's fine, but you start to get it. So like 1.5, I see, I, I find tends to work the most. And again, as you, as you start to move this, it starts to kind of soften it up. And so we leave this as 1.5 and one, and then these things just don't matter what whatsoever. Now to prove that this is actually working besides, you know, going into play and seeing that only the torches have this glow, we're going to turn off one of the torches to prove to you that it actually works. So we're going to change this from the layer of props to default. Yes, change everything. And you can see that does not have a bloom, whereas this torch does. It took me forever to figure this out. I didn't, probably just because I'm stupid. I don't know. Um, it's it's unintuitive for me. Why would adding a bloom to this take away the bloom from that? And so if you know, let me know in the comments below. I think it's just how, it, how the algorithm mixes it. Uh, I'm not quite sure but I start to get the effect that I want. And it is relatively cheap. It's it's not too bad because one layer only has this and the other layer only has the bloom. And so what would I use this for besides torches, right? I would use it in things like um, if, if I had a spaceship shooting lasers, I could do this if I had anything like that. And so there you go. I'm going to take a, ch a second. Um, that's it for the tutorial. But if you're interested, I'm going to show you some cool things with the different layers, okay? And so this is just a good quick random thought. With the bloom, we did don't clear. If you do depth only, it actually gives you a better effect. So let me go ahead and show you this. It gives you a much better effect. Ooh, I did, oh, because after you, you, you we turned off this play, it, it changed the prop back to the prop. Um, a lot easier, but the problem is it renders through everything. So it's just rendering it straight flat on top. So if you had a game like Heroes of Hammerwatch, where nothing would go in front of the, the torches, and you know that, um, this would be a better option, the depth only, because then it basically layers it. But we have a game that is going to be hiding behind props, so as you move around the dungeon, you would actually get behind this and it'd turn off the bloom and it'd go back on and stuff like that. And so there you go. Um, I'm going to be trying to do these, these little cards at the end of these tutorials to try and you know suggest videos that you might like. So here is Heroes of Hammerwatch Review. It's a great game. You should go watch it. Support the devs, right? Uh, maybe it's not your cup of tea. Don't support the devs, whatever. I just want to give that option. And also here's some more Unity tutorials. Thanks, guys. This was a fun tutorial to make. Have an awesome day. See ya.